That's the way it works. You plan on 20 minutes and an hour and a half later. <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we are here. still here <laughs> at the UTV Takeover Sand Hollow 2020 event. Uh, something pretty epic going on down here. So um, if you're missing out this year, make sure to check it out next year. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to be back again for another awesome ride. This is a, an amazing place. Pretty sick. Yeah, for sure. Good to see the wind died down. Yeah, we had some we had some nasty uh, weather come through last night and take out some uh, vendors. It seems to be a theme at uh, the Friday Saturday transition for uh, takeover <laughs> events that the wind comes through and starts to threaten uh, tents and, and structures. For sure, yeah, it was it was an alarming sight when I arrived. <laughs> <laughs> so we helped out some guys there, and uh, now we're back into the thing. And uh, we just had some other great interviews we got done with, and uh, today we got another special guest. Got another one lined up. Yeah. So What's the, up, Steve? How's it going, guys? <laughs> so we got Steve Pichard from uh, Rugged Radios. He is the OG, the OG Steve. And, right. And uh, we're lucky to have you in the booth today to talk about, uh, you know, what you're doing and where you come from. Uh, we happen to be in the the rugged trailer. Yeah, the, absolutely. So this was the uh, Rugged VIP Lounge, and it's turned into the demo room and uh, sales center. Podcast room. Right now, podcast, it's the podcast room. room. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Where else can you go at an off-road event and have climate-controlled environment, know, right? right? <laughs> yeah, Zach's pointed that out a couple times, actually. We, we started on the roof, and it seems like we might want to stay in here from now on. This is yeah, pretty nice. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, hear about, um, you know, what's going on. Uh, you've been with Rugged Radios for a long time. Uh, kind of give us the background on uh, what you do at Rugged Radios, Rugged Radios and, and kind of the operation there and what you're doing. Sure, sure. So I started at Rugged Radios uh, probably five and a half years ago or so. I came from the uh, semiconductor industry up in Oregon. Um, so ran a clean room fab there and uh, over a Facebook post of all things that Greg, the owner of Rugged, did, uh, I had responded to him, told him that, man, you got such a cool place. Are you hiring? Just kind of being a, a funny deal. And uh, 10 minutes later, he gave me a call yeah. and said, hey, I'd really like to have you down here and, and help me take this company to the next level. And uh, so who knew? I was going from Bend, Oregon to Pismo <laughs> Beach, California. <laughs> and how long ago was that? That was about five and a half years ago. So and went I'm, from one pretty setting to another pretty setting. Exactly. One destination to another, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what would, what was the business like then? What, what did it look like then? So when I got there, there was, oh, what did we have? I think probably 18 people working for us. And now, five years later, we're uh, mid-40s with people. So that's the growth that we've had. Yeah. Um, I am, I, I feel totally blessed to do, I mean, this is my passion. I mean, I came from the racing world, uh, racing short course, racing desert, uh, race motocross, race pro quad for up until I was 42. So off road has been my life. So to be able to have my, my job be my passion as well. It's fantastic. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys offer, a, uh, offer up a product that if somebody hasn't had visibility on it, really, that's all they need. Right. And they can pretty much determine whether or not they have to have it. And right. more often than not, people are like, oh, that just makes total sense. Like you're, you're putting in radios at the same time you're putting in a cage, you know, it's right. like one of the first, first right. modifications. Well, and the other thing too, is when people buy a communication system, initially they're like, Ooh, that's a lot for, for this, just so I can talk inside the car and we can talk inside the car already. And and they come to realize that, no, they yell inside the car yeah. and they point. And <laughs> yeah. uh, once you get an intercom, and you, especially if you've got a family, uh, you got a couple of kids in the back and stuff, and you can talk the whole time to each other. And just like we're talking right now. I've talked at 80 miles an hour just like we're talking right now yeah. in my cars, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Cake. And yeah. then to be able to talk car to car. So now you don't have to wait to talk to your buddies. You know, you can you can BS the whole time. And I mean, never mind the safety aspect of it. If you're the front car and say, hey, there's a rut or there's a car coming or, um, you know, the dust, you get a heavy dust thing. You can separate. You come to an intersection. Hey, I'm going right at the Y. Everybody knows. The only person that gets lost is a guy that doesn't have a radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes uh, it, it's the most common scenario that I've sat, I found is that people don't understand the car to car communication thing fully mm -hmm. until they've sat through and experienced it on a ride with a buddy or right. you know whatever, and then they're like, oh. That's handy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's next level. It, yeah. it really is. It takes your ride to the next level because, like I said, you're, you're real time with all your buddies 
being able to BS and talk. When somebody does something dumb, you can razz them right away. Yeah. Um, it's just fantastic. <laughs> Very few people in this industry really understand trail etiquette. And it's one of those things, what, like we were talking about, about being out in front of a group. Uh, it's it's critical to yeah. be able to send warnings back to the rest of your group. It's, I mean, I've we did I've done runs where I almost got took tick took it taken i'll get there mm-hmm. taken out like at least once to twice per day and be able to relay that back to your group so they can get out of the way that it's oh, critical absolutely. well the- and especially if you have a uh kind of a high impact group so to speak yeah. guys that like to really rip you yeah. know um to be able to have that safety aspect of being able to talk to each other we had the uh the big idaho run you know recently and and that wouldn't have been possible without communication from the front to the back yeah and uh you know like he said, calling out stuff on the way through as he was our, our point man, he was calling out everything in front of us. And it may be, you know, 20 miles of nothing, yeah, right? right? But at least we know that and we can take it at speed and not have to worry about right. it. Yeah, they right. were giving me crap saying I was calling out year make model VIN. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. XLT package. <laughs> right, right. It's green. It's got a little dent on That's the side right. of it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't me. Three passengers, <laughs> one tall. Washington license plate, LCD. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, let's, let's hear a little bit about the history behind you and, and what you've done with the company. I mean, obviously you were saying that you were in, uh, you were in clean fab at one point, but yep. you know, the, we all start young somewhere and right. where, where those influences come from. Yeah. And you've got, you've got history on everything from uh, sport bikes to motocross to quads yep. and yep. Now, Our, now up to the big toys. Yeah. When I was in Oregon, I rode with a uh, street bike stunt uh, group, uh, Shogun's ERC. So we used to do some stunting shows and that kind of stuff. Um, just kind of ridiculous stuff. And professional kind of show off. Professional show off. Yeah, that's that what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> we just call him Chad, but yeah, yeah. no, so, we, we grew up around the Burt Reynolds years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you know, it, it's it's super rad. It, it's yeah. super rad to be able to do, to do all those things and then be able to carry it over. Now, I mean, I literally went from racing motocross, racing pro quad, you know, doing stunting on on thousands cc sport bikes to uh, now i ride a ridiculous atc 70 and a tw 200 <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> so. for sure yeah of, of, of all the stuff that you guys get your hands into and stuff that tw 200 I, I i would show a video of to my wife i'm like you can do that like you can absolutely do that i could teach you how to yeah. Do, uh, oh yeah that makes so much sense the cool part about those bikes is it, exactly anybody can use them you go to a uh, motorcycle safety training thing and that's the bike that they use for it dude there is a there's a youtube channel called fort nine he's a mm-hmm. guy up out you've seen you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he, he did that tw review and he's going the rumor is is that the tw can't jump which is ridiculous the tw cannot land <laughs> right. exactly exactly yeah. well little known fact right now elka is doing a one-off shock for us on our tw wow right of course they are <laughs> <laughs> but uh so anyways uh yeah so i came from oregon doing that whole clean room thing uh, started working at rugged uh, obviously my background was i did a lot of racing and stuff uh, and that goes clear back to my dad uh, my dad back in the he raced the very first mint 400 so on a motorcycle the very first uh, wow. wow yep on a hodaka 100 scrambler wow. Holy cow. So, yeah so <laughs> it's kind awesome. of been that way and my brother used to race for uh factory suzuki and factory kajiva back in the day um so it's kind of it's in my blood for you know, sure kind of so thing. you can say so, you might have been a little bit competitive a little bit a <laughs> yeah. little bit yeah. a little bit so how did you get into the clean fab like what process did when you did you go from like a young guy in the family <laughs> race into being in a clean clean room so that's a funny story right there so i uh i hit I, up on a facebook I, messenger are you guys I, I, right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> my mom said my room needed to be clean so but. no actually before that when i was 18 i started working at a uh, mill a wood mill in uh, Madras, Oregon, of all places, and uh, started there. Like I said, I was 18 years old and uh, started stacking lumber off of a finger joint machine. And within six months, I was running one of them. And within a year, I was running the plant. Wow. And uh, I was there for 21 years. Wow. And uh, I did uh, a lot of airbrushing and stuff on the side. I was heavy into drag racing for 10 years. So I ran a super comp car. 
and uh, I always wanted my stuff airbrushed, couldn't afford to do it. And I was kind of an artist, kind of artsy fartsy, so I picked up an airbrush and started painting. And next thing you know, I got halfway decent at it. Oh, I've seen some of your stuff. It's yeah. awesome. So I started a business when, right when I left uh, the wood industry in 2008 uh, when the, the economy tanked. Um, and of course, I started a, you know, a custom paint shop. That's a perfect timing when there's no uh, business to be had. Right. But uh, I did that for four or five years and uh, it started getting tough. And one of my buddies worked at the semiconductor plant and uh, he said, hey, you should come down and apply. And I was actually the very first person that had zero experience in a, <laughs> uh, in a uh, clean room type facility building semiconductor uh, chips. And uh, anyways, within six, seven months, I was literally running the fab. So wow. it's uh, it's all about just what you want to do and your passion and for push. Sure. You know? For sure. So, yeah. but. so uh, how did you kind of make the jump into UTV? Was it a pretty normal, tr- easy transition? Or so what you triggered t- it? Yeah. What yeah. triggered it was is my brother. My brother was the uh, race manager for Funco. Um, down in California. And uh, so he always had, you know, he had an SU car before that because he was with Suspensions Unlimited. And then when he went to Funco, he got his Funco car and everything. Well, when we were doing desert racing, they were bringing their sand buggy out into the desert and, of course, just beating it up with rocks and everything else. So uh, that was 2011 when they had uh, Polaris introduce the XP900. And so he bought two of those to use as chase vehicles. And uh, I went to Glamis with him for Thanksgiving and got to drive one of them out there. And uh, my initial thought was when I got there was, oh, my God, I'm going to drive a golf cart out there. But once I drove it, I was like, man, this is kind of fun, you know. For sure. And uh, so when I got back, I decided that uh, I was going to buy one of those. And this was in uh, 2012, I guess. It took about a year. Um, and the uh, kind of the ironic thing about it was, uh, when I bought my very first side by side, my XP 900 was my first, uh, short course car. Uh, the day I bought that car was the day my brother passed away in our class 10 car. Oh, wow. So basically that day just changed my life. You know, I went from racing motocross and everything just like my brother did. And then, uh, I bought this car and when he passed away, it just, put full force into the racing thing with it and uh, so it solidified your your placement in that scene absolutely absolutely and now i mean going from being a nobody kind of thing to being immersed in the middle of the this industry it's been fantastic yeah you know yeah so and then the cool thing is is with rugged uh kind of to jump forward a little bit uh uh, my rs1 that i have right now we did a uh, destination polaris project x and uh Greg and I had talked about doing a Funko SS1 uh, little buggy thing, so we turned the RS1 into an SS1. So we used, uh, we got with Gil and uh, Grant and Greg down there. They pulled one of their old buggies out of their uh, um, out of the shop. We popped molds off of the panels and everything, so we had legitimate SS1 panels for it. We built this car on the show. Um, a week before I was kind of in charge of doing the whole thing. And I had told Greg at one point that I would really, it would mean a lot to me to put my brother's number on the side of the car and just kind of did it kind of, kind of a nice little reminder for me, you know, and, uh, a week before the show, before we filmed the show, uh, all of a sudden I wasn't allowed in the fab shop anymore <laughs> and all this. And I knew something was up, but, uh, Greg, such a great guy. He, uh, uh, dedicated the whole car to my brother. And gave it to me on the show. I would show. say that's probably my favorite episode yeah, of, yeah. of the show. It's pretty rad. That dude's one in a million. He is. Yeah. He is. He is. Yeah. Oddly enough, in uh, off-road UTV, mar- in, the, in the UTV market, the first two people I ever met were Steve Gonzalez and Greg. Yeah. And talk about the two that you want to meet. Right. You know? Oh, absolutely. Just, well, they're my best friends, too. Th- so, yeah. yeah. Th- things for me personally just, they, they catapulted. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, it was so funny. Like we started working with you guys, like at Sandsport, we would put up a battery rack and, right. and somebody, <laughs> so, somebody would ask Greg, like, uh, tell me about these full throttle batteries. And Greg would just say, we put them in everything we run. I'm just like, that's actually perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> enough said. That was enough said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. So you, you did a couple of builds recently and this is kind of when I met you, um, you were, uh, I think if I remember right, you were transitioning from an RZR to an X3. Yep. But they had a very similar look. You want to yes. talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So my daughter, um, 
my daughter was in the military. She literally was headed that way from junior high on with junior ROTC and clear through high school. Uh, in fact, she was the commander her her senior year at the high school. And when she graduated high school, she uh, was in the uh, Army National Guard. But she's a crew chief and a medic on a Blackhawk, which is pretty freaking cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So her first deployment, she ended up going to Kosovo. While she was in Kosovo is when I was building my new uh, XP-1. And I wanted to dedicate the car to her. So we did the full Blackhawk medevac theme on the car. The whole car was drab green, had the red cross on it, the whole deal. Um, and then when she got back is when we first got the car done. So the first race for it was UTV Worlds. It worked out perfect. Um, we got done racing UTV Worlds, and I got it cleared. It took me three months before my daughter was even back from her deployment uh, to do a photo shoot on the tarmac uh, at the uh, Army base, the, the Air Force base, Cool. Um, So which was really cool. So I got to do a photo shoot with her on the tarmac with the car. It was just amazing just amazing and then uh when i made the transition onto the x3 of course carried that theme through and then uh that's when you and i got together yeah. and, and all that so uh yeah it's been been pretty fantastic and since then my daughter's uh since retired uh, last year 10 and a half years in the in the army so pretty proud yeah pretty for sure. proud of her for sure yep. yeah that x3 still to this day holds a very special place in my heart that thing was uh Without a doubt, the most ridiculous, like, purpose-built right. car I'd ever seen in UTV. Because it just, dude, that thing was yeah. unreal. <laughs> yeah, and the, the cool Everything th was thought of. The cool thing about that car was uh, two of my best friends in Oregon built that car. Yeah. Um, I had changed. I had changed jobs. I was down in, down in California now and not up in Oregon. And uh, they were the ones that helped build my other car, my XP1. And they were full on for the challenge. So they spent many, many a late night. Uh, working on the car in fact uh funny story with that <laughs> pete uh pete zinc he's the one that did it at his fab shop at iron environments and bend and uh greg had called him up and greg being greg said hey pete uh do me a favor go bare assed in in your car in my new car and do a photo <laughs> of it and send it to me you don't ever tell my buddy pete to do anything <laughs> like that because he did a full production he went cowboy boots and cowboy hat and did a full photo shoot on my brand new X3. Sounds like a guy I could get along with. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, th that's not bad enough. The fact that Greg took our whole media department and they had canvas prints made. They were, that was literally going to be my next question. That literally went out and they changed my backgrounds on my computers. <laughs> they did uh, little flyers and pamphlets in my folders uh you name it they did it yeah. and they had gopro cameras all over I, I can't even imagine how much greg spent on this little prank <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to get it done whoever at rugged, rugged radio is doing human resources just plug your ears right now. <laughs> right well and the funny thing is is once i got done with the day at work and you know everybody's all laughing about it i go home and i walk into my house and in my living room is a full print <laughs> of naked Pete on my wall. And I thought, oh, my gosh. That's and, the best. and then I go into the bedroom, and then there's one <laughs> hanging over the bed in the room. And, and I looked at my wife, and I said, I don't know what's more disturbing. The fact that my best friend is naked hanging on my wall or the fact that my wife put him there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's but, awesome. anyway and that's the and that's how we roll it right yeah we, we all have a good time we, well, uh yeah i mean that actually segues into what i was going to say next like uh you've got the there, there's this thing on instagram and and certain other media it's this it's the whole rugged radio laughs lifestyle like uh -huh. what we do on these show circuits we get to we get to basically get exposed to just some pretty epic stuff you guys are starting to give people visuals on that through this whole uh, kind of this rugged radio's lifestyle endeavor. If, right. Yeah. And then that's kind of transition to uh, trikes now. You guys are oh, out yeah. there playing on. We got uh, our little speed yeah. on three yeah. stuff. Yeah. As and if pre runners and side by sides aren't enough. <laughs> right. And TWs and, and TWs. everything else. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> and taco and right. taco tours. <laughs> right. But the, I mean, the biggest thing, like the uh, the TWs and the and the little three wheelers. The problem is, is when we go to an event we work so much and so many hours that we need that little outlet and we don't have the time to take the side-by-sides and go on two-hour rides yeah. 
you know, or three hour rides or whatever. So we have to have those, we have those little outlets that we can do right now and we have a good time and it's, it's kind of innocent fun. And, and honestly, who doesn't smile when they see a little ATC 70? For sure. You know? For sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the explosive growth that you've had over the few, last few years. And uh, that's really kind of reciprocated into investing back into the community and being right. a part of shows like this. I mean, like you come into this show, the first thing you see is a whole row of rugged stuff set right. up to support the community. Um, that, that speaks a lot to brands that want to be a part of the community that you, you, the more you invest, the more the, the community's going to invest back right. into you. How, how has that kind of translated for you guys? And I mean, you, you've invested a lot into these shows and these, this big trailer and, and all this different stuff that you do. How, how has that worked out for you? So, and that's kind of the building block with rugged is it's all about the support you know, the service aspect of things. When somebody buys one of our systems, they're part of the family, you know, and when they come to the trailer and and we take care of them or if they have any kind of issue or they want to upgrade or they want to hook up their friends or whatever, it's us just being there for them. And we're, we're enthusiasts. We're not yeah. just a big company that's just trying to make money. Yeah. We're out here we use all the stuff, you know, myself at Rugged, and we talked earlier and I kind of went off key about what I do there. So Steve Gonzalez and myself are both product development at Rugged. So we use this stuff all the time. We want to make things better. We want to be out here. We want to touch our customers. We want to hear, what do you want? What do you like? What do you need? You know, because oh, I've seen that, you guys, that's where we're at. I've seen you, know? you guys in real time at like eight, eight nine o'clock at night, uh, troubleshooting via Facebook to a guy on the other side of the country. Absolutely. Just, just answering me. Yeah, I've, I've seen it firsthand. But, we never shut off. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, I was. you mentioned Destination Polaris. I was actually talking to Jared Christie. Uh, Jared's the, the producer and the host of Destination Polaris. Um, I made a comment to him uh, about Greg in particular. I'm just like, uh, he's not supporting the industry. He's driving it. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I, to oh, sure. I totally believe that. The investment in the community is, is definitely uh, what drives our community forward. And, and being upfront and honest and not trying to throw a, a, a slang to, to, to make the sale. Like, you know, you walk up to your booth, you're going to have an honest conversation about what to expect, what to put in your car, why right. you want it. And, um, you know, there's very few vendors you can go to shows and just see someone taking care of this thing over here on the phone and then taking care of a wrench on this car and then right. and adjusting somebody's antenna on another car and then advising another employee on how to take care of that other customer. Right. Like you guys are out there just putting the hours down and putting the, the time in. Well, and the other thing too is not only are we doing that all the time, but we've all got a smile on our faces. For sure. We're all just happy. I don't think I've seen love. him not <laughs> have some sort of grin on his face. Yeah. And I'm surprised your teeth don't have a dirt line on right. them. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, in reference to how hard he works at these shows, like towards the end of the day when he's getting that window where he's going to get to behind, get behind the wheel of the rig, like I've caught myself engaging in a conversation with him and I cut it short. I'm just like, he's been going all day. Go play, dude. Right. <laughs> I'll bug you tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. That, that's why we use Casey highlights yeah. all the time because we always have to have lights on our cars because we never <laughs> get to drive, drive in the shade. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so uh, the company's growing. Uh, you guys just came. Uh, you're getting close to moving into a new building. Talk yes, a little bit about uh, that. That's so exciting. We are uh, super close. So I think uh, by Monday or Tuesday, we'll have uh, occupancy on our back two buildings. So we're building a full on complex. Uh, not just a building in the middle of an industrial I think you guys area. Like a whole city block. Almost. We we actually bought a uh, strawberry field. Of wow. all things. Um, if you're ever going to build a building, don't ever start with an agricultural field. Oh my goodness. But, um, anyways, yeah. So we've got this huge lot. We've got four buildings going in on it. Uh, three of the buildings are almost complete now. The main building um, is we can literally pit, fit fit uh, probably three and a half of our current buildings in the one main building. Wow. Um, our fab shop and installation center building is as big as our current uh, shop that we're in right now. And then we also have a car museum going in, uh, which is just going to be fantastic. So all of our, our destination Polaris builds, our Project X's, um, our off-road trucks, every one of our vehicles and all of our toys will be on display. So when you come to Pismo or whatever, you can stop by, check it out. And then the other cool part about it is, is we're putting in a uh, coffee and tacos. So we're not talking uh, um, Taco Bell how tacos. How jealous is every single business out there right. that's built a building in the last 
last year not thinking oh we should just also start a taco business right yeah. well we all like we all like coffee and we all love tacos the, cam- the camera didn't catch me sighing that was jealousy <laughs> right? Yeah. right so yeah the the coffee and tacos is going to be just off the hook so you know google has like cereal for their employees, right? Right. Rugged goes out and builds a freaking taco stand outside right. their shop. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, I got to imagine with the showroom and stuff, I mean, as much media as you guys do, that's going to be a nice, real comfortable space for you guys to develop some stuff in-house too, I got to imagine. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've literally, uh, the cool thing is, is building our own building from the ground up, we designed it the way we want it. So with uh, Steve and I, we're upstairs on the mezzanine. We now have a full sound room in there that's double insulated and everything so we can run, you know, 130, 140 dB in there and be able to check uh, noise reduction and that kind of stuff, that's intercoms awesome. and, and that and mics and, and everything that we've we've struggled to do before. Um, we'll now have a really good place to do it. Yeah, um, so that, yeah. that's cool. So you're, you're talking about actually developing an R&D space and, and you're not just pumping out products right. from a factory. You're, you're actually investing some time with the implementation of those products. Right, exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just going to be ridiculous, you know, to be able to do all this. And we have the space now. Um, we can kind of separate out. And the other thing, too, is uh, people don't know, we, we literally overnight product every day into the office because we just don't have enough room to store a large quantity of it. So right. we are literally cycling through product every two weeks yeah. in the office. So uh, now with the bigger facility, we're going to be able to get bigger shipments in. We'll be able to fulfill better. We'll be able, it's, it's just all around going to be better. And then having the uh, fab shop and everything, we can do a lot of our R and D stuff with mounts and that kind of stuff right in house and be able to take care of it. Plus have everything in one place. For sure. Um, you know, sure. we'll have a couple that, of lifts. That speaks volumes to an actual like team strategy, being able to communicate on that one-to-one level versus having to spread out. Like COVID's obviously been a big part of people's struggle with business this right. year. And part of that is the ability to communicate effectively. And, and there's no better way to do that unless you're in person. So right. that that's great. If you guys have been split up for this long, imagine what how much more efficient you'll be together. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And just having everything in one spot. Right now we have a uh, warehouse in Grover Beach and it takes about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to get there. So if you got to run down to the warehouse, you're losing almost an hour just to run down there to grab something. Right. You know, and I'm granted most of it's stuff that we got down there is vehicles and, and that kind of stuff, some overstock, but uh, uh, it's just getting rid of that and having everything in one spot is yeah. just going to be fantastic. So you guys... Uh recently have uh you got some big news you guys have moved over to a digital type uh, you want to kind of jump in on I mean, you you've known me long enough to know that i have no idea how all this <laughs> right. stuff works I really like, I, have to dumb things i down. just bring yeah. it to you broken <laughs> and next thing you know it's working great again right. <laughs> yeah so right. so traditionally you've you've stuck with an analog radio right. in both handheld uh in your in your dual bands and then in your your in-car vhf uhf units kind of explain where where that was and where you're going and, and kind of what you have a gone to at the moment sure so i mean the the desert world of you know uh, california arizona nevada all the desert racers and stuff um, analog vhf commercial bands has been been used for 30 plus years yeah um obviously in the world as we know today technology and everything's come around um same with television you know analog digital analog tv versus digital tv and stuff and it's the same with the uh, radios um the digital platform although super complex it has some really cool stuff yeah. that's involved um like literal um you can do gps positioning that you can send so when you key up it sends your location um you can send text messages back and forth uh via through your radio um, and then the other thing too is, is it digitizes your voice and it knocks out all of that ambient noise behind you. So all you hear is voice when yeah. you talk on it. Um, and Steve and I kind of laugh because the, we've, we've had these a uh, few of the digital radios for a while now and we never really did anything with them because everything's been analog, you know, and, uh, we threw them on our T-dubs to do a, our, our Tuesday test session that we do that everybody thinks that we're just going out to go play, but we're actually testing stuff. Yeah. Um, um, but we threw them on the bikes and literally five minutes into it, we were like, man, we are stupid. We should have been using these for years. It is 
unbelievable the voice yeah. the, the clarity of them yeah i'm um, looking forward to checking it out uh uh the setup that we have on the pro mm. is is with the new tech on it yep. and uh so far so good man it's been great and like my old setups i've run 25 watt i've run 60 watt they all work like a champ it was just uh you know occasionally i'll have a rollover or something right. like that <laughs> and uh miss something right <laughs> like i've actually right. i mean zach I, i've actually called steve at um uh, when I put my 60 watt in, it works on specific channels and I was, I was operating on a channel that you could listen to, but you could yep. broadcast broadcast on. I think I, I think I called him at like you six did. o'clock on a Sunday and Dave's just like, yeah, well, yeah, you, you need to run it through these channels. I'm like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. You mean, okay. the, <laughs> you mean the user manual has helpful information in it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we've, so, we've covered uh, this so, yeah. uh, so just to provide a little bit of value to our listeners um, you know there's always this discussion around uh, the UHF EHF what mm-hmm. does it all mean GMRS like right. FR like what what kind of is the the base standard for your radios and how does that compare to what you buy like maybe at Cabela's or, or Walmart right. or something right so uh, the, like I said before, the the desert group of people we've been they've been running VHF analog for three decades. Right. You know, um, there are other things. So UHF and VHF are two kind of they're same business ban, but they're two different animals. So um, I always try to explain it as uh, sorry, this guy's about ready to run into a canopy out there. Um, the uh, State police are the highway patrol versus city police. So highway patrol will run VHF because they're on highways. They've got nothing in between them, no obstructions or whatever. VHF gets you the distance. UHF is what the city police officers run. So with all the buildings and all that stuff. So UHF goes around objects better, but it doesn't have the distance. Where VHF has a distance, but it doesn't go around the object. So if you're back east or you're up in Oregon and heavily treed areas... Go to UHF. Yeah. It works fantastic up there. And the other thing, too, is, and especially on the West Coast, everybody runs VHF. You go to UHF, there's very few people on those frequencies. Right. No, that's good to know. You know. That's good to know. Especially uh, for us up in the woods, in the mountains, you know, understanding the differences between those head units is important because right. they do do that. Now, is it because UHF uh, will bounce off of stuff better and become more of an echo it's, chamber? It's the wavelength is what it is and, and why it goes around things. So yeah. VHF is a very linear where UHF has a lot more arc to it. So it'll, it'll go around objects. And, and that's what GMRS is, too. And, and, uh, and especially GMRS is, is huge. Um, there are several thou- or a hundred and some repeaters around the country with GMRS. Um, it does require a license to have it, but it's literally $70 for a 10-year family license. There's no test or anything. It's just 70 bucks. Really? So there, super, there is a non-tested easy. license for GMRS bands? For GMRS yeah, bands. I was, gonna, yeah. I was literally going to prompt you on that because yeah. that that's something that generates a lot of dialogue online about right. ham radio licenses, right. this, that, and the other. Yep. Can, can you speak to that and kind of just cut that nip that one in the butt right. as so, it pertains to your guys's products and your guys's frequencies. Right. So with, uh, I'll, I'll start with the GMRS stuff cause we have GMRS platforms too, um, which are absolutely fantastic. Um, those, like I said, 10 year license, it's 70 bucks, super easy. There's tons of repeaters out there. Um, works awesome and trees and all that stuff. And even at places like Glamis and stuff, it works great. And the cool part about the GMRS stuff too is if you've got those little cheap walkie talkies that you got from Cabela's or from Walmart or whatever, that's those frequencies. Right. So you could use those, talk back and forth, have a 45 watt radio in your car that's a GMRS to get that power out and then still use the cheaper walkie talkies around. And the as nice well. thing about that is you can have the family can have those cheaper, they may fall in the water, they may right. get ran over, whatever, no big deal, radios and still be able to hear dad in the car, still be able to hear mom in the car. Right. And uh, you know, they may not be able to broadcast because they're a low wattage handheld, right. a half watt, one watt, whatever. Right. Uh, but they might still be able to hear. And, and knowing something is half the battle. Absolutely. And so uh, that's a huge game changer for families. Um, you know, in my predicament, you know, with the young, young boys that are adventurous and we send them out to go do their thing and, you know, be able to communicate with them, but also have them be able to hear us when we're, we're the ones that they need to hear. Right. Oh, um, exactly. And so uh, also, can you speak to a little bit about a re- what a repeater is uh, so that people that are, 
are hearing this, like a lot of people don't understand radio. So we, right, we right. want to kind of communicate what, what is a repeater and right. how does that work? Put your hand down, Ian. That's yeah. fine. I know how to key it. <laughs> <laughs> so a repeater, what it does is uh, it's a, how do I explain this easy? Um, it's basically another radio that receives your signal. So if it's fairly close to you to where you can go out, uh, let's just say two miles and your repeater's two miles away, it's a high-powered uh, another radio that's got a tall antenna on it that can broadcast, you know, 50, 60 miles. So what it does is it takes your transmission, sends it to it, and then sends it out. So you can get that little radio to talk 50 miles just because it's going through a repeater. And that's usually on top of a tall hill, mountain, something yep. like that. So if you're at the base line of sight, something like that, you can actually reach over the mountain into the next area with a repeater. Correct. Correct. Is there anything yeah. the customer has to do with their radios to actually use the repeater? It's just being on that that frequency. So and and that's radios in general. It's all about the frequency. Yeah. So so the ham world, they talk about repeaters and having access codes and all this other stuff right. related to that. But in this section of the frequency range and the radio setups that you have, they're basically if they're on, they're on, they repeat, they right. work. Right. Talking about the analog world and going into this digital platform, um, you know, the handheld experience or the, the, the console experience, how does that change for the user? Is there another way to learn? Do they have to relearn the whole system or is it just going to work? Or No, and especially with our radios, we try to make, uh, we try to build our handhelds and the mobiles very similar. So the application, the being user friendly to where you can look at it and this functions the same as this function, the same as this function. So it's not real confusing. Um, basically most of us just need to be able to turn it on, pick a frequency and talk. And I want to speak to that yeah. real quick because there's a lot of arguments back and forth on the, the keyboard warriors of Facebook right. and whatnot <laughs> about, you know, I could buy X brand radio, I could do whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and and I won't lie, I have a lot of those radios, right. uh, but it's because I have a different use case than most of those people. Sure. But most 99% of people out there just need it to work. Right. The Ian's of the world need it to just turn right. on, select the channel and go. I want to talk to my buddy that's quarter of a mile up the trail right. from me and my group That's. has the same channel we all agree on this yep. one channel um and, and it works and so when you look at your radios you're not going to see all these fancy features and menu okay. options and, and four level deep menus and and frequency ranges and you know quad decimal right. frames and all this other stuff right you're going to see you know rugged rate relay one or checkers two or you know something right. like that um and it makes it just way, way more easy for somebody just to jump in and use it, which is essentially what UTVs have done, right? Well, they made it easy to jump in and have fun. Right. Yeah, and for the record, I put my last kit in top to bottom. Works like a champ. So if I can do it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Food for thought. <laughs> Food for thought. He, he yeah. ends the goal, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So uh, going back to the digital and analog, so you had referenced TV with this, kind of like the transition from the analog TV days to the right. digital TV days. Um, and, and you kind of made the point that with analog, the, the signal's always there, and it's basically just telling it the radio when to not broadcast to my right. ears that noise. Right. It's, it's always there. Right. And so if there's a weak signal, you're still going to kind of hear it. Yeah. That's and when the, you get the... <laughs> Right. And you don't know exactly where you hear pick up a word or two or whatever. Right. And then when you go to digital, uh, you're basically broadcasting zeros and ones. And if that stream of zeros and ones stops, so does what you hear. It stops. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, but the, also the difference is, is like I said, with, with television, analog, and, and digital, uh, look at the clarity. So look at a digital sure. television. Then the new over-the-air digital, digital broadcast is, I mean, it's like you're watching cable. It's fantastic. Or the old analog, it was kind of all grainy and that kind of stuff. And that's very much the difference in the voice quality between digital and analog. Yeah, it's funny that your process is that you guys are discovering this stuff and r and in it just out in the field, mm -hmm. beat, beating on it. Absolutely. And being enthusiasts. Absolutely. So. And we have a lot of big stuff coming. We've, we've, got, some, uh, we've got some stuff in the works that's going to knock this industry to the ground. It's going to oh, be fantastic. I know you do. Fantastic. <laughs> For sure. So, yeah. so uh, if we're going to talk about handheld versus in-car, 25 watt versus 60 watt, kind of give us a, a rundown of like maybe some segment groups and what they should be looking at and their application. So that because people just see radios and right. they see a price point and they see it looks like the same picture and it right. costs like this one costs less, that one costs more. Well, right. like how does someone go around identifying which unit to buy? So the, the biggest thing is range. Um, and then usability. Obviously, in the UTV world, uh, having something that's hard mounted in the car 
is fantastic because now you don't have to worry about battery life. You don't have to worry about it. It's always in the car. It's always hooked up. It's always wired. Um, so that's kind of the direction we go with it. Uh, the difference between, you know, 25 watt or 60 watt or whatever is literally the range on it. But in all reality of it, most people can get away with a handheld for what they do. For sure. You know, that's, you know, one to two mile in range. You're usually just talking to your buddies while you're in a group. And two miles is, is in most situations is enough to keep the dust down. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and the other thing, too, is price point. So you can take, uh, you can get the full system, you know, a two-place system in the car, Bluetooth, all the wazoo stuff, you know, where you're looking at, you know, 15, 1600 bucks. Or you can do a handheld radio with a cable that goes up into your helmet, and you're done. Right. And and you're with your own your two hundred bucks. Right. The you nice know, thing about talk. the nice thing about the handheld units and like you just said, running a cable up to the helmet and then maybe a, a push the talk down to your hand, uh, is that you can apply that to multiple vehicles. You mm-hmm. can take that with you too. Yep. You can have it on the walk. You can have it on the bike. You can have it on a quad. You can have it in the car. Yep. It kind of works in all scenarios. So it's a really nice mul- modular platform to work with. Um, and then you can, you know, always have some sort of accessory mount to put it on the cage of a car or, or whatever. Right. Um, and that, what I really like about that though, and one reason why I've kind of always had handhelds personally is because when I get out of the car, I still want to be able to talk. Right. I don't want to have to like hear something in the car, run back to the car. Right. What'd you say? Okay. And then go back to what I was doing. Right. Yeah. Well, and especially with doing media stuff, it's, yeah. it's gold. Oh, for, for f- film, yeah. for filming, it's, it's from, a necessity. Yeah. From yeah. a media standpoint, I mean, you should see what King of Hammers looks like. I mean, everybody's got a little blue hand out in their pocket. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yep. Everywhere. Yeah, Speaking yeah. of that, you guys go to these events, right? You guys are at the trade shows to sell and support and do all that. Yeah, but I think you we, also I think go we to the did, races. We did a couple last year. I think we did 92 last year. So, a couple. Yeah, just a couple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was in 19. Uh, yeah yeah and yeah. so yeah. you're not just there though you're also supporting the event by having technicians and even equipment on site to support those racers and those teams and, and things like that can you kind of explain that process yeah absolutely so i mean everything from you know best in the desert to lucas oil to whatever not only do we help communications with the racers but we also do the communications for the event staff for right. operations for for everything for the safety uh, crews and that kind of stuff so we do a lot of behind the scenes stuff um and then not to mention you know the, the racers that are out there and the recreational guys especially like koh um, I mean, it's a full blown city out in the middle of a desert. You know, there's, I don't know, 50, 60,000 people out there. And well, it, you, it, you've it, seen Mad Max be on Thunderdome. Oh, it, yeah. It's Thunderdome. It is. It is. It <laughs> yeah. is. It, some years it's even dustier. Yeah. So. yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. So when you're talking about those events, you know, when you're talking about having 5,000 guys or radios in their hands, um, how does that all play into keeping the network clean like of channels? Like you guys have a set number of channels on your radios how does that become a a a clean process it's 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 very much i mean on the the user end of things it's you have to be polite about things obviously when you get in a situation you're you're out at king of the hammers or you're you're at glamis on a holiday weekend and there's two hundred thousand people out there well it's only a short little bandwidth of frequencies that are that are out there so you just have to be you know you just have to be um be smart be smart and be nice if sure. somebody's talking on that channel, go to a different channel. Yeah. Or, or give them their whatever. time. Or turn your squelch down a little bit so you're not hearing all that chatter, so you're just within your group. You right. know? So if you turn your squelch up to, say, eight or nine or whatever, it'll knock out a lot of that stuff that you're hearing all over the place. Yeah. You know? For those that aren't familiar and are, are just entering this radio world, because there's a lot of people that just still don't know radios yet, squelch is the threshold of where... Where the, it breaks to open up. To open up, right? It's right. going to gate everything off. And so you're not hearing all the chatter, right. the noise, the background stuff until it hits a certain threshold of noise level, and then it's going to let it through so you can hear it. Right. Correct. And so on the radios, you have that adjustment to on the yep. fly to, to set it however you feel like you need it. Yep. Yep. You sure do. So the digital stuff's coming out, uh, but it still has analog built into it, It does. Right? And, and especially like our new RDH radio, it's not only is it VHF, but it's also UHF. So it's a dual band radio. Oh, you got a dual band version now. And it does analog and digital. Wow. So it'll talk to every well, one of to the <laughs> other radios that are out there in analog mode. And once you get your group all set up on digital, you can switch to the digital channels. Right. And, uh, so it's a nice way to transition. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and, and for like us, when we're backcountry routing and all this other stuff, there's a lot of other 
uh, resources out there that like the weather channels and the, mm -hmm. uh, the ranger stations and the, all that stuff that are still on to analog and they're going right. to be on analog probably forever. Yeah. And on um, our, on our, uh, RDM, excuse me. Um, it has the weather channels already programmed in it. It's in its own separate bank. There's, right. I don't know, five different banks, six different banks okay. and channels on there. So. Having that hybrid radio, you're able to facilitate the, the experience that you want with the clarity and the, and the cleanness of the audio and all that in car, car to car. Right. But then you can rely on those resources because we get into situations where it's like, theoretically, we could be stuck in the middle of nowhere with no resources and no way to communicate. Now, we've solved a little bit of that with the, the, the in-reach and things like that, but right. you're still relying on your friends and family at that point right. and then emergency services. But if you need to just talk to the ranger station or the forestry service or whatever, you could theoretically do that with the hybrid radio. You could. Yeah, you could. We should probably let Steve get back to his booth, considering right. that uh, it's starting to pick up out there right. a little bit for sure. But, uh, you know, on a personal note, though, like... Um, um, you know, rugged and full throttle go back to the day full throttle got eyes on off road. Yep. And uh, from, I remember that. Yeah. And, you know, my first build was that little Yamaha YXE. Mm -hmm. And it would have been anywhere from eight months to 16 months behind where it actually was if it wasn't for you and Steve. Right. You know, I really appreciate that. And, uh, it's family, man. Yeah. It, well, it really <laughs> is. You know, uh, I'll, I'll get texts every now and then. You and I, you and I talk a little bit over the phone. Um, uh, usually it's a phone call. Uh, Steve and I, uh, Gonzalez and I will, will text a little bit here and there, but if probably it, late night, it is, it is a hundred percent. Um, <laughs> if, if I don't want to know what you're talking well, about. Well, what it is, <laughs> nine out of 10 times, what it is, is it, you guys are working with somebody that you love. Right. And then you send them our way as well. Right. And, you know, we've had those conversations, vice versa. It's just, uh, you know, and I tell the, I tell our home office all the time, I'm just like, Hey, if rugged pre-qualified them, it's just a no brainer. Right. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great relationship. No Good. question about it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I know our, our trailers going to all these events, having your batteries in them, it's uh, made a world of difference. Yep. <laughs> so uh, if people want to get more information about radios and communication and, and really understand what they're supposed to be looking into buying, uh, where can they go to find that stuff? Um, you know, talk a little bit about the breadth of product that you mm -hmm. offer in that, in that solution set right. um, to the person that is new to this uh, concept. So uh, obviously we have our YouTube page. Um, it's got tons of tech videos. It's got uh, show videos. It's got all kinds of stuff. It's got uh, Greg, our sham wow guy. Uh, he does a lot of videos. Uh, we absolutely wait, love more. him. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but so there's lots of tech tips and that kind of stuff on there. But the biggest thing is we're real people and uh, we answer the phone. For Call sure. us. Call us, call us, call us. Preferably and, during business hours, people. Right, <laughs> right. But uh, no, our whole staff is super, super knowledgeable. And if you have any questions at all, we'd love to answer them for you. That's awesome. You know, um, and especially, you know, tech questions and that kind of stuff. Just give us a call and uh, we'd love to answer it for you. Yeah. And, and you guys do have products in the installed, the handheld, but you also have... Uh, built helmets with with comm systems in them with mics and ears yep. you have all the different kind of components of the ecosystem available and ready to to investigate more information on absolutely and, and what a lot of people in this industry don't know is rugged doesn't just do off-road stuff so we came from the aviation business so boats. our boats our, as well too. Our, <laughs> our, our, yeah exactly yeah. our top th our third top seller that we have at rugged is an aviation headset wow um, and then we also do fire safety and uh, EMS and police, and we take care of all the police departments in, in town with earpieces and all that kind of stuff. So we do a multitude of things. We take care of, we have a lot of uh, agricultural stuff going on with the vineyards and that kind of stuff around, uh, around us in the Central Coast. Uh, so yeah, it's not just off road, but off road is our passion. So we kind of focus on that. For sure, it's marketable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but also, you know, Greg told me at one point you guys were working with the NFL. Absolutely, it's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely, we work with a lot of people For that sure. I step back and go, wow. Yeah, you know, I get a phone call on on my phone on my personal cell and. I'll look at it and go, how did this happen? Yeah. You know, how am I talking to these people right yeah. now? No, you we, know? we work with hydroelectric dams. We work with uh, wind machines, and they pay for me to go rip out the dunes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, so. uh, awesome uh, content about radios and information there. 
gra- glad to finally hook up with you and, and meet you face to face. I I've only met you online before right. this, so um, that's that's what these shows are about: getting out, meeting, yep. talking. We've said on the last podcast, you can gain so much more value in just talking, getting the right information from right. the right people, yep. than assuming you're making the right choice with right. your pocketbook. So, right. well, we and we personally, we have uh, we have some pretty unbelievable stuff planned for the next eighteen to twenty four months, and Rugged's going to be a piece of that, whether you guys oh. even know it or not. Right. We're, we're gonna, <laughs> be, Rugged will be along for the ride. <laughs> right. So, yeah, right. And we really appreciate you guys. So, I just want to say our our new complex, we should be in it somewhere first of the year, and everything. I mean everybody to come out you guys don't have an open house we we will we're gonna have a off the hook open house we're gonna have right, everybody that's anybody in the industry will be there right, cool. uh it's gonna be the whole town the the literally the city commissioner is uh planning for it because they know it's gonna be it's huge. gonna be a big turnout it's gonna be huge has and the date been established yet or not not yet we're still uh we're still right now finishing up getting the setup inside the main building um so obviously we don't want to say hey it's going to be the first of january and we'll be in but um it's going to be probably right around that time so killer so something that we (laughs) missed uh that i wanted to hit on uh you guys do something i think it's every year uh with some some different colored handhelds uh and and by the time this gets to the air that event will have passed but i think it's very important that people understand what's going on and how they may be able to participate right so and this is one of the great parts about rugged and about Greg Cottrell, the owner, uh, super big heart, and he he really wants to do good for the communities and everything around. So every year for the last, I don't know, three years, four years now, um, we've worked with Renee Hudson, um, and she's with the, uh, what is it, the... Let me see if I can get it right. The Havasu Associated or Cancer Society of Havasu is what it is. So we do a hundred pink radios, our little handhelds, and Greg donates one hundred percent of the funds to the uh, um, the Havasu Cancer uh, deal. So and that is not just the handheld. So it's eighty five dollars for the handheld, but it's all the tax and all the shipping goes to Havasu. Rugged takes zero in. And and kind of in relation to Greg, it wasn't the inspiration for this. It was one of the employees, wasn't it? No, actually, we had started this prior to that. But okay. uh, last year, in fact, it's been just over a year, uh, Taryn, one of our sales staff, who she's my bud, yeah. um, she got breast cancer and went through all treatment. And uh, so during that time, uh, Greg, the guy that he is, made sure that she was totally taken care of during it. Uh, we brought in uh, some pink RM60s and did a uh, kind of the same deal where we sold those radios and all of it went to charity. Uh, part of it, part of those funds went to Taryn to take care of all of her out-of-pocket costs that she's had That's with unreal. all of her cancer treatments yeah. and, and all that stuff. Um, it was, it's just fantastic. An effort like fantastic. that really takes a different shape when it hits that close to home. For it does. Sure. Yeah. It does. Oh, and, awesome. uh, you know, Taryn's still with us. Um, in fact, she's uh, rock solid, one of our top salespeople That's outstanding. and stuff. And, uh, yeah, she's uh, pretty tough, as she calls it. That's the hashtag for, for Taryn is pretty tough. Pretty tough. That's pretty cool. tough. Um, but, yeah, she. Uh, what's funny is when she went through her chemo and all that stuff, she is Asian descent. She had beautiful black hair that went clear down to her butt. When she uh, shaved her head, she rocked the crap out of it. So, you <laughs> and know, Greg, Greg did Greg it too. shaved his head, and he's still got a shaved head because yeah. he looks younger now. He wanted to be as pretty as I am. Gotcha. So, gotcha. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. So, anyways, yeah. So, today is actually the day. In fact, I think it's going on right now. We, we did 250 radios this time. Wow. Um, to give it that much more. Um, out there as far as going going to charity yeah. and stuff. I'm going to uh, keep some eyes out for that next year. I'd be proud to rock that. Yeah, but so. we got a, got a little surprise for UTV Takeover, so um, oh. I've got two pink radios that I'm going to do an auction on tonight during That'll the be raffle. Rad. That's yeah. killer. So, That's and killer. the cool part about that is nobody can get two radios. You're limited oh. to one. So this will be the only person oh, so you're that gets them together. putting them together. Oh, okay. So this person will get two radios, not That's just gonna be one. Awesome. That's awesome. That's rad. Yeah, this That's is rad. really, really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Well, I appreciate you uh, making time for us here when time is 
of the essence. Right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> right. I keep peeking out the window because the booth's uh, right over I here. Know. And I'm like, the Whoa. line's starting to form. They're all waiting for him. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So. Lo- love the content. Love having you on here. Um, hopefully, the community benefits from knowing a little bit more about the product and how, how it all works and, and what to look for. Right. Again, they can find you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all those yep. places. Yeah. Um, get more informed. RuggedRadios.com. Yep. And uh, we'll keep us in the loop on the open house, too. We'll see if we can make it down. Yeah. For that, See, that we can't work absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And we're, I want to thank. We're, we're kind of okay at cameras, so <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yeah. right. So I want to thank you guys for bringing us in and, and everything, and Off Road Syndicate for this beautiful trailer and uh, the little demo room for rugged and, and all that, and allowing us to be cool sure. and out of the wind and yeah. and everything. Yeah, so. this has been awesome. Yeah. So thanks for being here. You thanks bet. for listening, guys. Until the next time, right. peace. <laughs>